We didn't know that he set up his own personal uh, form and that he ran it through his constituency office. So that if you wanted money from Tony, call Tony's staff, they'd get you the money. We didn't know that. The $50 million G8 legacy fund controversy reignites today with the official opposition alleging a government cover-up. What's in these new documents obtained by the NDP? Charlie Angus just showing them there. Why weren't they given to the Auditor General when the fund was being investigated? Sitting beside me right now is Charlie Angus, and then we'll also hear from Dean Del Mastro and John McCallum. Stay with us. Welcome back to Power and Politics. New documents the NDP has obtained, these ones right here, suggest a possible government cover-up involving $50 million G8 legacy infrastructure fund. Well, that's the allegation, according to the NDP. The New Democrats obtained these documents directly from the municipalities involved in the fund. They're now accusing the former industry minister, Tony Clement, and the current Treasury Board president of using the G8 legacy fund as an elaborate slush fund. Those are their words. Here's the hot sheet on what they found. The NDP says the new documents reveal Clement met with municipal leaders to discuss G8 infrastructure projects nearly three months before the summit sites were formally announced. That would be in August. Project funding applications were filed directly through Clement's constituency office, and the NDP says this was in order to avoid scrutiny by the Auditor General's office. By the way, in the June Auditor General report on the G8 Legacy Fund, the AG found no paper trail for the 32 projects involved, which he called unusual and troubling. But the NDP says the municipal funding application documents, these ones here, should have been provided by the government to the AG's office. So why did the government run applications for the G8 Legacy Fund through Clement's constituency office first rather than using federal channels? Why weren't these documents given to the Auditor General? Let's find out. Joining me now is the Parliamentary Secretary to the Prime Minister, Dean Del Mastro. He's sitting beside the Liberal Treasury Board critic, John McCallum. And with me here in studio is the NDP ethics and access to information critic, Charlie Angus, who, who had the press conference today. Charlie Angus, uh, I'm looking at these things. Uh, what, when you got these documents, and we've outlined some of the details, what, what troubled you about these? Well, I think people have been troubled for some time about the fact that $50 million that was voted by Parliament to improve border traffic, to prove, improve security at the border for Canadians, was funneled off to Tony Clement's riding and spent on some pretty dubious projects, the gazebos, the paving of the bunny trail, a dirt road in the middle of nowhere. What we didn't know was how they managed to do this because when the Auditor General looked into this, the Auditor General came up with two startling uh, announcements. One, there was no paper trail. And two, all the senior bureaucrats involved in all the departments that oversaw the G8 told the Auditor General they weren't involved at any level. Yet, when we find these documents from the, from the municipalities, we find that Tony Clement, long before the public even knew about this money, was chairing a secret committee, that minutes were kept, that senior bureaucrats participated in those meetings, and the uh, municipalities were told, if you want money, fill out this homemade form that Tony gave them. Uh, it wasn't a government form at all. And they ran it through the constituency office. So... I could just, Jerry, I, I, this is the form... I'm not characterizing, I'm just showing you the form that uh, Charlie Angus talked about. This is the community project, the G8 community project summary form, and it says here, please complete the project summary and forward to Sandra Reed, the constituency manager at Tony Clement's office. And I'll just show one more because this is the meeting, just so our, our viewers get a sense of this stuff. This is August 13th, 2008. The project's sites weren't announced till November. Uh, so these are the documents you are yeah. talking about. Yeah. So, long, like, th so long before the public ever even knew about this, the meetings were taking place. The Auditor General was never told about these meetings. The Auditor General wasn't told that Tony Clement was chairing the meetings, that minutes were kept. So the big question is, is if this was a perfectly okay way to spend $50 million of taxpayers' money, then why, when the Auditor General went looking for the evidence, were senior bureaucrats saying, we don't know anything, when obviously they were at the meetings. Why did the minister not tell her there was a paper trail when the paper trail ran through his okay, office? Okay, now, now Tony funny. Clement has re responded to these allegations, saying, quote, there's nothing new here. We've heard this before. The Auditor General has already investigated this. Uh, he's fully yeah. investigated this spending, and all information was made available to the Auditor General. And the Auditor General was clear, we know what we paid for on those 32 projects. In other words, no money that was spent on these, every dollar that was spent went to these projects. So they're saying that this has all been dealt with, so there's nothing new. Your response well, before we bring in the Well, I mean, down. unfortunately, Tony Clement still refuses to be accountable to Canadians. What was told to the Auditor General when they under 
that undertook their report is completely contradicted by these notes. And we've never seen a situation where a government minister or government bureaucrats played a shell game with the Auditor General. So the Auditor General fulfilled their report based on the evidence that was given, signed off by bureaucrats who said they were never involved. Now we know none of that was true. So I'd like Tony Clement to at least say, you know what? I'm fessing up here. I did set up these, uh, all, this whole private alternative parallel system. I ran it through my office. Here's okay. the paper trail. Just show us. If so, you showed us, then we might know that this was okay. Dean Delmaster, I'm looking at these documents here. August 13, 2008, three months before there, these, even the site of the G8 was uh, publicly announced, and there's a G8 summit local working groups, areas of interest with the, the mayors, and there's this form to fill out, and then there's another meeting days after, November 7th, after they were announced, to get this group going. So, first, the first question, should Tony Clement have had a meeting with the local mayors months before the site was announced and then say if you're interested in a project run send me a note through my constituency office is that the right thing to do uh, absolutely i think it's always right to meet with your local mayors and your local representatives to talk to them uh, and, and frankly to get uh, to get organized for what priorities are in your riding i think this is quite normal uh, as Tony said, there's absolutely nothing new here. I, I can't believe Charlie had a press conference with us uh, when all the facts were clearly known months ago. There's not a dime that has not been accounted for. We proudly announced all 32 of these projects. That's how Charlie knows which projects there were. We publicly announced them and, and made it available for all Canadians to scrutinize them. And as far as being accountable to Canadians, Tony Clement and our entire government was accountable to Canadians on May 2nd. I would submit that Canadians have had their say. But, but just two things, again, I just a answer. Is it normal then for if you want a, s a community project, and these are going $50 million went into his riding, and, and y even the government admitted that you could have done better because the Auditor General, when I spoke to the Acting Auditor General, said he'd never seen anything like this in 30 years. But is it normal to pass this just through the constituency manager and not through other channels? Is that normal to submit your request for money to a constituency office? Well, I can tell you that in my constituency office, we often handle applications. Uh, we make sure that they get to the people that they need to go to uh, for review. Uh, we work with local representatives. I don't think there's anything uh, odd here at all. I'm sure Charlie works with his, uh, with his local representatives in, in, in trying to find ways to uh, get federal government support for projects. I don't think that's odd at all. I think the Auditor General did make a number of uh, suggestions and recommendations on, uh, on how we can improve things moving forward, and we've implemented those for all future projects. Uh, John McCallum, what, what's your sense? Should the Auditor General have had these documents? Absolutely. I think this is very troubling. I think it's absolutely abnormal. I've never heard of it before that such decisions would be made in a, in a constituency office. And the second thing that is troubling is that the Auditor General said that civil servants were not involved. Now we learn that they are involved. So we don't really know the truth. And so I've proposed two things. Today I sent a letter to the Auditor General asking for a value for money review. And the other thing I think would be appropriate is for a report, a study with witnesses, including these civil servants, to come before the Government Operations Committee in the, in the near future. So I would say to Dean, Dean, if you uh, don't think that anything has been done that's wrong, if you have nothing to hide, would the government agree to a review, a study, at the Government Operations Committee to deal with these new allegations? Uh, Dean Del Mastro, w what about that? Uh, should the Auditor General have uh, had access to this? And if not, what about a value for money audit? Well, again, uh, Evan, uh, all of these 32 projects were publicly announced. Uh, the accounting for it is publicly displayed. The Auditor General reviewed that spending, found absolutely no irregularity in the spending. Uh, it didn't indicate anything uh, that, that there was any cause for concern as no, far they as did. Just to how be the fair, money they did was spent. Not, not what the money, necessarily how the money was spent, but exactly. legitimate cause for concern that it was flagged to be spent on the border issues and then was spent inside the riding. There was legitimate yeah. concern from the Auditor General on that. And we have, as I said, the Auditor General made uh, several recommendations. We've implemented those uh, recommendations. We're a government that prides ourselves in transpar transparency and accountability, and, and we want to make sure that, uh, uh, that we are running as tight a ship as possible. Well, well if he's Evan, so pristine pure, why does he say no to bringing the matter before a parliamentary well, committee? Well, Evan, the issue here is that pork is the oldest and most basest political vice. That's why accountable governments 
have rules in place. Number one, you depoliticize the civil service so that they are a check and a balance. Number two, you make sure that ministers can't treat taxpayers' money as their own personal booty to give out of the back of a car. What we've seen with this is that the government, first of all, misled Parliament. They told Parliament that there was money that needed to be spent on border infrastructure, so we supported that. Then somehow they managed to take that $50 million, they put it in Tony Clement's riding. Now what the government's defending themselves on is like, hey, all the gazebos that we spent $50 million on came in on budget. Well, we know how they came in on budget, but what we didn't know was how the process was. But the AG is, has seen these notes and they've, they've said today that they will not reinvestigate this, this matter. Is, and this is, this is the most troubling. We've never had a situation where government ministers and bureaucrats played a shell game with the Auditor General. Once the, the Auditor, Auditor General won't reopen this that's the issue. investigation. Once the Auditor General's report is done, it's complete. So now th we find that information wasn't given to the Auditor General. And what's most troubling is the fact that the Auditor General, contrary to my friend Dean said, the Auditor General had many, many, many concerns. Among them, the fact that bureaucrats told the, the Deputy Minister signed off saying, we were not involved so we can't speak. And yet, we know that it wasn't just right. meetings that he was advising them on. They were planning how the money was being spent. Mr. Clement chaired those meetings, and he had senior bureaucrats sit in on those meetings. So when the Auditor General asked the questions, how is it that all those bureaucrats said, we know okay. nothing, we see nothing, we hear nothing? That is very troubling. La I got about 20 seconds here, Dean Del Mastro, just, just to be fair, a last word to you. Is this, do these documents reveal that, you know, the Auditor General never saw these, so Canadians ought to be reinterested in exactly how that $50 million was allocated. Not what happened once it was allocated, but how it actually got allocated to what projects. Again, uh, there's nothing new here. The Auditor General reviewed the file. The Auditor General made recommendations. We've implemented those recommendations and we're moving forward. The Auditor General was uh, kept in the dark. Period. All right, I, well, That's that, not I, true, I, I Charlie. Gotta, I gotta it's not true. We'll pick Every penny's accounted for, panel. Charlie. Uh, Dean Del Mastro, Charlie Angus, and Thank John you. McCallum. Always good to have all three of you on. Thanks.